everyone today we are going to talk about carotid doppler ultrasound and what to look for first we should know that the stroke is the third most common cause of death in the western countries it's about 75 percent of cases are due to thromboembolism from the carotid arteries so so that's the main indication of why we do carotid doppler patients with ischemic strokes with transient ischemia TIA uh, carotid arteries need to be evaluated for possible uh, as a possible cause of this stroke so the duplex scanning is uh, used to identify the presence the severity and the type of the disease in the extracranial portion of the carotid arteries three main points don't forget them always scan both sides avoid excess pressure excess pressure on carotid bifurcation and avoid excess pressure on the arteries because the excess pressure on the carotid bifurcation might cause uh, abnormality at the carotid body which might change the hemodynamics of the uh, cere cerebral circulation and sometimes uh, if there is a plaque it might cause it cause it to rupture and might cause extra uh, emboli thromboemboli distal thromboembolism first in b mode you should image uh, the carotid arteries in transverse and longitudinal fr uh, access uh, from the clavicle to the mandible with special attention to the carotid bifurcation which is the most common site of carotid plaques whether calcified or non-calcified any nodule uh, any plaque should you should notify the position the extent and the type of it in the color doppler image the common carotid, internal carotid, and the proximal external carotid in also in longitudinal uh, view, noting the area of aliasing and lumen narrowing. The areas of aliasing are the areas of uh, that present significant stenosis. If there is significant stenosis, there will be aliasing distal to it. We'll talk about it uh, in a few minutes. And when you use spectral Doppler, you should take signals from the common internal and the proximal external carotid arteries and any areas of suspected stenosis, noting the peak systolic and diastolic and the presence or absence of spectral broadening. If there is any tortuosity, you should know it. Uh, this is because this is a differential diagnosis as a cause of brewery and also important to record prior to carotid and arterectomy, the tortuosity. Then, after you finish the carotid system, you should start evaluating the vertebral arteries. It can be difficult sometimes to see them, especially if one of them is uh, non-dominant, non the other one is dominant. The non-dominant vertebral artery can be difficult to see and image. Uh, try different window, try to turn the head to the side, use color Doppler to identify the vertebral arteries. I usually decrease the uh, PRF of the or the scale of the uh, color Doppler when I image the carotid the vertebral artery to make it more obvious. Okay. What appears to be reversed flow may be due to tortuosity or flow in the adjacent vertebral vein. So you should be careful when you report there is reversed flow in the vertebral artery. You should be very sure that there is reversed flow because this indicates uh, vertebral uh, steel syndrome. For example here, you can see this is the vertebral artery and this is the vertebral vein. You can see this is a transverse process of the C, uh, cervical vertebrae. This is a transverse process. You see them in between the transverse processes. You notice that both of the vessels are clearly visible. One of them is blue and one of them is red indicating that one of them is towards the uh, brain. One of them is distal from the, going distally from the brain. Okay. So. In duplex scan, what are the, vert the normal findings? The ICA, the internal carotid artery, has a low resistance flow pattern or signal because the brain is a low resistance vascular bed. Brain needs continuous blood flow. So it has a low resistance pattern to ensure that the blood continuously flowing to the brain. Okay, the peak systolic velocity should be less than 125 centimeter per second sometimes shallow upswing and a relatively high end diastolic velocity the end diastolic velocity is high this is called a low resistance pattern we will see examples the external current artery has a high resistance pattern why because it supplies the high resistance vascular bed in the face the face does not need blood continuously like the brain 
so it's a high resistance bed while the in, the brain is a low resistance bed the blood goes preferentially to the brain okay the common carotid artery is a combination of both high and low resistance pattern because it gives the blood to both internal and external carotid arteries the normal vertebral artery has a peak systolic velocity of about 40 to 60 centimeter per second with a low resistance waveform as it supplies the brain everything that supplies the brain has a low resistance pattern everything that supplies the extracranial bed has a high resistance pattern like here you can see this is the internal carotid artery there is peak systolic velocity of less than 125 centimeter per second here it's about 70 centimeter per second and diastolic velocity that is high it's about 40 centimeter per second here this is a low resistance pattern okay because the end diastolic velocity does not reach the baseline or not near the baseline while you can see in the external carotid artery high resistance pattern end diastolic velocity is about 100 while the uh, sorry the peak systolic velocity is about 100 and the end diastolic velocity it's very close to the zero okay this is a high resistance pattern here the examiner uh, the temporal artery is he's doing tapping on it to confirm that this is external carotid artery when you do tapping on the superficial temporal artery you can see it in the waveform like here you can see he's tapping and the blood flow is showing these taps okay if you are not sure that this is external carotid artery you can confirm by tapping well the common carotid artery has combination of both it has a high peak systolic velocity and a high end diastolic velocity some somewhere in between high resistance and low resistance pattern so the internal carotid artery peak systolic velocity and the presence of plaque at gray scale or color doppler images are primary parameters for the grading of ICA stenosis there are some additional parameters that includes ICA over CCA peak systolic velocity ratio and the ICA and diastolic velocity will be taken into consideration we will talk about it in a few minutes this uh, uh, shows you the perseverity of the stenosis and the uh, corresponding changing changes in the peak systolic and end diastolic velocity for example if the stenosis is less than 50 percent the peak systolic velocity will be less than 125 centimeter per second then the diastolic velocity will be of no importance okay well if it's up to 70 percent now we will have we'll start having some hemodynamically significant stenosis the peak systolic velocity will be more than 125 while the end diastolic will be less than 110 centimeter per second and the ratio of the ICA over the CCA will be more than 2. If it is less 70 to 80 percent, the peak systolic velocity will start increasing even more to more than 270 centimeter per second, also up to 100 percent or 99 percent. Okay, while the end diastolic velocity here will start increasing from 110 to 140. Yani, if the peak systolic velocity is more than 270 centimeter per second go and start studying the end diastolic velocity is it more than 110 or more than 140 because this indicates very severe stenosis okay the ratio of the ICA over the GCA you can use it to confirm the ratio will be more than 4 yani a velocity post stenotic velocity at the ICA will be significantly increased over the CCA relatively to the CCA to the common carotid artery okay yeah. more than four times exactly so when the physician refers to you a patient for carotid Doppler what does he needs to know what what are the things that you need to report it first is the arteries diseased or intact healthy if they are diseased which arteries are affected by the disease are they stenosed or occluded this is very important to define to tell him is the artery totally occluded or just stenosed because if the artery is 99 percent narrowed okay very different management from if the artery is totally occluded if I, you tell the referring physician that this artery is 99 percent stenosed only one percent patent they can put a stent and open it one percent just patent okay if you say this is completely stenosed 
they will have to go for endarterectomy. It will be surgical, not uh, by cath. Okay? The management totally different for from between 99 to 1%, 100%, sorry. Okay? If there, are if there is a stenosis, what is the degree of the stenosis? What is the nature of this plague? Where is the uh, where is the current bifurcation? Is it high? Is it low? Is it at its normal position? Are there features that could make color Doppler more difficult, like high bifurcation, tortuosity, coils, kinks, plaque extension, or an arrow? What is the flow direction in the vertebral arteries? Are they normal, stenosed, occluded, absent? Okay. Is the scan quality adequate to allow reliable management decisions without the need for arteriography? You should tell him. Further evaluation by conventional catheterization is recommended. Further evaluation by CT NGO is recommended. Further evaluation by MR NGO is recommended. No need for further evaluation. You should tell him. I am satisfied with this scan or not. If I'm not satisfied, what do I recommend? Okay? Because he's not there with you to see. You should tell him. For, for, uh, for the current uh, arterial studies, the, you should be careful with the machine settings. The machine settings should be precise. In B mode, you should use the maximum dynamic range to aid in plaque characterization. In the color Doppler, you should set the color velocity range to approximately 35 centimeter per second to highlight stenosis without aliasing through the entire artery. The aliasing should be only distal to a stenosis, not the whole artery. Yani you should increase the scale, increase the PRF, okay? Decrease the color scale and increase the color gain to show low flow signal, uh, low flow distal to an occlusion or high grade stenosis. We will talk about it and we'll show it in details. In spectral Doppler, you should set the velocity scale from 50 to 150 centimeter per second and use small sample volume to help clear clear up the spectral trace and place a sample volume in the center of the artery or within the stenotic jet stream. Yeah, you should not the place the gate uh, at the periphery of the artery. It should be at the center of the artery. Okay, because at the periphery, normally there might be some turbid flow. Decreases, decrease the spectral Doppler scale and increase the spectral gain to show low flow distal to an occlusion or a high grade stenosis. The technical parameters that can affect the accuracy of the current ultrasound results includes the Doppler angle, the sample volume box, the color Doppler sampling window, the color velocity scale, and the color gain. Okay, so you should make sure the color gain is good, no aliasing throughout the entire artery. The color velocity scale should be relatively slightly high, like around 35 to 50 centimeter per second. The sampling window should be around one third of the lumen of the artery. Okay, and should be at the center of the artery. Okay, and the angle should be less than 60 degree, ideally. The Doppler angle affect uh, the Doppler uh, frequencies. At the best angle is zero. When you put the Doppler angle at zero, it's the best angle. However, physically this is impossible. You cannot make a zero angle. You should be inside the artery to make a zero angle. And the only way to make a zero angle is for you to be inside the artery, which is impossible. So the acceptable angle is from zero to 60. So the angle should be less than 60, not more, okay? So no Doppler or no, no shift of the angle will be recorded if the angle is 90 degrees. So the worst angle is 90. The best angle is zero, okay? The orientation of the current arteries may vary from one patient to another. Therefore, the operator is required to align the Doppler angle parallel to the vector of blood flow by applying angle correction or angling the transducer. Either you angle your transducer by you angle your hand, or you change the you make steering of the box of the carot of the uh, color Doppler. So. The sample volume box and the angle correction is a common source of operator error. The Doppler angle should not exceed 60, as we said, sometime, somewhere between 45 to 60, because the measurements will be inaccurate if it's more than 60. Okay? 
the sample volume box the part that you put the volume box in should be in the mid lumen okay the disease if the disease, if the vessel is diseased it should be aligned parallel to the direction of the blood flow okay where is the blood flow you should be parallel to it okay and the, and the absence of plaque disease the sample volume box should not be placed on the sharp curves of the tertius artery this may result in a false high velocity reading yeah if you see a tortuous vessel don't place the sample volume at the tortuous part place it at some you look for straight part and place it there okay if the sample sample volume box is located too close to the vessel wall there will be artificial spectral broadening so that's why you should put it in the center of the artery not at the periphery at the periphery there will be artificial spectral broadening for example here you can see the sample volume angle is incorrectly aligned with the vessel wall this is incorrect because it's not very parallel okay the peak systolic velocity reading is 229 229 centimeter per second okay you can see here this is the peak systolic velocity it's slightly less than 240 centimeter per second okay so you might say there's severe stenosis here the stenosis is more than 70 percent all what we did here is just change the angle from 60 to 44 degrees okay you rotate the angle and the peak systolic velocity now is 161 somewhere here okay a, a big difference from 229 centimeter per second to 161 centimeter per second okay this is a correct reading because the direction of the blood flow is, so, is like this so you should put your angle parallel to it okay parallel to the direction of the blood flow not to the direction of the artery this is parallel to the direction of the artery you see this is the artery okay this is the direction of the angle it's parallel to the lumen of the artery okay this is wrong you should make it parallel to the direction of the blood flow the blood flow is going like that because there is a plaque here soft plaque okay don't put it parallel to the direction of the artery put it parallel to the direction of the blood flow okay the be the 45 to 60 is very good exactly the 45 to 60 degrees okay 45 to 60 degrees this is the peak systolic velocity get it 229 is peak systolic velocity here is the angle how much 960 now 44. 44 so 44 45 it's accepted in both type in both types they are accepted but you should put it parallel to the direction of the blood flow this is a wrongly placed angle parallel to the wall of the artery not to the direction of the blood flow so changing the angle like by few degrees affects the reading by a large amount that's why you should be very precise in where you place your box and what angle you place it the difference is a lot okay uh, a clue to that if you measure the percentage of the stenosis and you see it for example 70 percent stenosis while you see the post stenotic velocity is greatly increased yeah it doesn't fit with the 70 percent stenosis then you might think that there is something wrong with your measurement okay yani if that is the percentage of stenosis which get the percentage of post stenotic velocity they should be compatible with each other Mesial stenosis method in 50 percent or post stenotic velocity of a 300 centimeter per second there is something wrong there is no matching they should be matched together okay measure of stenosis of 90 percent or post stenotic velocity of matter 70 centimeter per second there's something wrong my full post could more than 200 270 okay yeah it doesn't make compatible with each other you can see here there is a tortuosity in the angle this is the artery is making a loop like that okay 
you should be careful here where you place your window place it in the straight part don't place it in the in the curved part and don't place it at areas where this aliasing happens this will give you false readings okay take a straight part and go parallel to it you see the angle is parallel to the direction of the blood flow okay so what do you mean by spectral broadening it's the result of turbulence in the blood flow when there is a turbulent blood flow you have spectral broadening can result falsely from either large Doppler angle okay large sample volume box more than 3.5 millimeter sample volume box located close to the vessel wall or a high pulse wave Doppler gain settings these are the main causes of spectral art yani wrong spectral broadening okay the size of the sample volume box the gate the same some machines they write the gate some machines sample volume box normally kept between two to three millimeter or one third of the lumen of the artery one third of the lumen of the lumen of the artery or one, uh, two to three millimeter okay if the gate is too small like 1.5 millimeter the doppler signal might be missed if that too small the wound the gate wait let me show you this the distance between this line and this line is called the gate high masafa samuel gate should be between two and three millimeter if it's less than 1.5 you might miss small flow if it is large more than three you will have artificial spectral broadening you should put it in the center of the artery you should put it uh, away from the wall to get a good signal tamam this is turbulent flow beyond a significant stenosis this is what we call spectral broadening you see كل الفراغ يعني everything is filled with with signal so this is called spectral broadening it's very white يعني if we go sorry if we go back to the for example here you can see there's some black signal here okay this is normal this black areas okay when you get it like this full color this is spectral broadening this is what we mean by spectral broadening تمام so the color doppler sampling window you should place it over the artery to be interrogated the size of the color doppler sampling window should be adjusted to include all the region of interest and you adjust the angle as we said for example here the direction of the transmitted ultrasound beam is like that تمام here we put it like that so the angle is about 90 90 is the worst possible angle you get a very turbulent abnormal flow here okay so you angle your transducer make some sort of an angle or you use the steer you rotate the box in the opposite side. see this box is in this direction while here they we change the box direction we steered it it was to the right we make it to the left okay here and now we have a good signal and you can see there is some sort of aliasing here okay this is a good reading here it's a bad reading تمام again there is a tortuous ICA here see the RCA is very tortuous multiple curves okay if there is tortuosity and the artery is making different angles the best thing to do is make a straight and uh, box and you change your hand direction yani box is zero not steer to the right not steer to the left at 90 you change the direction of your hand according to the direction of the artery if it is tortuous if it's straight straight okay now the scale control the color velocity scale is the most important parameter of the carotid ultrasound the velocity of blood flood blood flow if the velocity of the blood flow exceeds one half the the scale or the prf the peak repetition frequency the direction of the velocity it will be inaccurately displayed and will be aliasing yani lazim in scale more than half the peak systolic velocity we will show you you can see here all of these areas that have different colors 
yellow and I don't know red or white or different colors okay this is aliasing why because the scale is only four four centimeter per second very low scale you get aliasing you get spillage of the color outside the lumen of the artery this is the lumen of the artery and you have color here and here okay what you do is you increase the scale the prf the peak repetition frequency the same thing scale or peak repetition frequency is the same thing you increase it here to 115 centimeter per second and you'll have very nice red color okay filling the lumen no spillage outside the arterial lumen and you can see the color is lighter distal to the stenosis indicating increased velocity here the velocity is higher than here just by seeing the intensity of the color okay again you see here the narrowest segment of this this all of this is stenosis the narrowest segment is here and you can see there this aliasing just in the narrow segment indicating increased velocity at this part not all the lumen like here it's pre-stenotic here it looks increased there is a raising artifact in the pre-stenotic part this is an artifact it's not correct okay while here this is the correct one normal color pre-stenotic at the most severe part of the stenosis there is aliasing this might help you determine which part is most severely stenosed okay again you can see here aliasing color spillage all defined margins of the artery all different kinds of colors mixed very bad due to low scale low prf 22 if you increase it here a little bit and you can see you have very nice color of the artery and the vein and you have uh, there is some stenosis here and you have an aneurysm here i don't know what you can make more details if you increase the scale to a certain limit if you increase it to a very high degree the color will start disappearing from the artery and you will get also bad readings you should make it very precise according to what you see in case of near occlusion the blood flow velocity may be slower than the usual color velocity when the stenosis is very severe the blood flow will start to slow down not increase okay so you should make the scale less in a very severe stenosis decrease the scale to get the arterial flow for example here when the velocity is 46 centimeter per second you can see there is a plaque here occluding the lumen and there is like complete occlusion no signs of flow tamam so what we did here is we decrease the scale okay from 46 just to 43 and you can see there is very tight flow very small flow this is called trickle flow يعني بس they قطر blood however this indicates still patent lumen this is totally different management okay so this trickle flow is very vital for the diagnosis for the management you need to look for it okay the color gain control should be said that the color just reaches the intimal surface of the vessel the gain you, you increase it the color reaches the intimal surface not less not more not spillage outside the artery not and the color is not filling the artery should fill the whole arterial lumen okay so if the high gain is applied there will, will be bleeding or spillage of color outside the lumen of the artery the bleeding artifact may mask the eddy flow at the surface of ulcerated plaque we will talk about that for example here you can see this is a color gain too high at 80 percent you can see there is just small plaque here something here and the rest of the artery is filled completely okay when you make a good color gain at 66 percent you you notice that this plaque here appears it was this dis disappeared here here we could not see it when we decrease the flow there is a large plaque filling the lumen okay and you can see there is the post stenotic increased velocity you can see this aliasing here so you should make an optimal color gain okay 
Uh, ultrasound diagnosis in extracranial atherosclerotic disease, the intimal medial thickness of the common carotid artery is thought to be associated with risk factor of stroke. So you should report the intimal thickness. How much is it? Normally is less than one millimeter. Okay? And you measure it at the uh, grayscale imaging, not color flow. At the grayscale, you measure the intimal thickness. At the thickest part should be normally less than one millimeter. If it's more, you report there is increased intimal thickness reaching up to, for example, two millimeter. Okay? This is the intimal thickness here. It's measured at 2.8 millimeter thickness. This is the intimal. You can see this is the intimal and it's slightly thickens here. When you see a plaque, you should report the following. Composition and echogenicity. Is it homogeneous, hypoechoic, heterogeneous, hyperechoic, dense, uh, uh, dense calcific with acoustic shadowing? You should report the surface. It is, is it smooth? And intact, is it irregular or ulcerated? Okay? For example, you see this plaque here? There is, it's a smooth plaque. It's hypoechoic. Okay? It's, the surface is intact, it's not ulcerated, and it's regular. Nice, smooth plaque. Okay? Soft plaque. It's not calcified. Well, you can see here this plaque, it's heterogeneous plaque. There is irregular surface of the plaque. It's multiple irregularities at the surface of the plaque. It might be just partially calcified. We need further evaluation, further images to decide that. But this plaque is definitely a regular plaque, okay? You can see this plaque here, it's smooth. The surface looks intact. It's not calcified. However, this, this hypoechoic area within the plaque indicates intra-plaque hemorrhage. In a non-calcified plaque, this is a high risk for rupture. If it's calcified, it will be stable. Tamam? If the plaque is calcified, it's a stable plaque, no problem. But plaque smooth, non-calcified, smooth surface also looks good. There is intra-plaque hemorrhage, there is a risk here. This hemorrhage might cause the plaque to rupture and cause distal emboli. This you should report. Tamam? Ulcerated plaques may be detected by demonstrating the eddy flow within the plaque depression at the color Doppler, or sometimes at grayscale flow imaging. Color Doppler within the plaque surface must be differentiated from artificial bleeding of the color due to high color gain, motion artifact, low color scale, or twinkle artifact. What do we mean by twinkle artifact? It's a random stroke reflection of the incident ultrasound beam at a rough surface formed by the hard plaque as cholesterol deposits may be mistaken for blood flow within the plaque. When you make a ultrasound for the gallbladder and you see cholesterol stones, you see there is an echogenic line behind the stone. Okay? The same thing happens in the arteries. If there is a cholesterol deposition, okay, then you might see this bright color behind the cholesterol deposit, posterior to it. When you put color Doppler, there will be an artifact behind the cholesterol deposit. Okay? Like, you can see this one here. Just a line of color. Nothing to explain it. Okay? This is called twinkle artifact. Okay? It's independent of the color velocity scale, cardiac cycle. It's just there. You change the cardiac cycle, uh, with the changes of the cardiac cycle, nothing happens. You change the scale, nothing happens. With increased color velocity scale, the color flow within the oscillated plaque will disappear, while the twinkle artifact will not disappear. Okay, and while the artifactual color from the cholesterol deposits will continue to twinkle posterior to an uncalcified segment. Yani, when you see this artifact, you make this color flow, okay, and you see this. Is this a plaque with an eddy current inside an ulceration, or is it an artifact? I don't know. It looks like there's some ulceration here with an eddy current within it. There is eddy current, there's turbulence within the ulcerated plaque. Okay? What you do, you increase the scale. When you increase the scale very high level, the, the color from the artery disappears while this artifact stays. So this is a twinkle artifact. It's not an, ul an ulcerated plaque, it's just an artifact. In the gallbladder. 
Sometimes in the kidney, if there is, yes, exactly. This is a twinkle artifact. It's just a, an artifact from cholesterol deposits. Okay, when you put color doppler, we'll give you this artifact. Tamam? Excellent. So, again, is this an artifact or an ulceration? You can see this plaque. It's here. Makes a depression. Okay. Is this an artifact or an ulceration? You increase the gain and the curl disappear, no filling within this depression. What does this mean? Ulcer. Ulcer. An ulcer. If it was an artifact, it should not disappear. Okay? If it disappears, it's not an artifact. It's a real, actual ulcer within the plague. Okay? Then, color Doppler interrogation may prove difficult or indeed impossible in the presence of a circumferential shadowing calcified plaque. This is an important thing to notice. If there is a circumferential heavily calcified plaque, you may put color Doppler and you see nothing. Just a dark line. Heavily calcified. You cannot gain any color flow. Okay? So, if the color and the pulse wave Doppler information is lost directly behind the shadowing calcified plaque, you measure the length of this calcified segment. That's it. You cover... You cannot measure anything else. If the shadowing segment is less than one centimeter, there is no turbulent flow distal to it. That means the plaque is unlikely to be more than 50%. Yani, you measure the length of the black segment, calcified segment. If it's less than, less than one centimeter, okay, velocity not turbulent behind post, distal to it, this heavily calcified plaque is not causing significant stenosis okay if the flow is turbulent distal to the plaque then there is a tight stenosis and you should confirm with other significant modality you should recommend CT angio or MR angio as you like okay yani, if the flow distal to the plaque is normal this plaque is not significantly stenotic if the flow distal to the plaque is abnormal this plaque is most likely significant stenosis, causing significant stenosis. Okay? If the shadowing segment is longer than 2 cm, the degree of stenosis is indeterminate. If it's more than 2 cm, I cannot decide. Go for other modalities. Okay? For example, here. You can see there is a calcified, heavily calcified plaque here that just causing severe acoustic shadowing. You cannot see anything distal to it. Okay? You put the color and there is no color gain just here, this part. And you measure it, you can see the flow is about 50, something like that, 45, 50 centimeter per second, indicating that this plaque, is it severe or not? No. Not. Okay? You can report as a heavily calcified plaque with no, uh, with insignificant uh, stenosis. Okay? While here, you can see this heavily calcified plaque. You can see a lasing artifact distal to it. You take a measurement and the peak systolic velocity is up to something 125 centimeter per second. So is this stenosis severe or not? It's significant, severe, causing elevated post velocity. Get it? So sonographic features of a severe ICA or CCA stenosis may include the following. حتى نقول هذا الاستنوس السفير we should look for the following peak systolic velocity greater than 230 centimeter per second significant amount of visible plaque causing more than 50% lumen reduction color aliasing despite a high color velocity scale settings like more than 100 centimeter per second and you still get aliasing artifact okay because the velocity is more than 125 the scale is 100 so you get aliasing artifact. Tamam? Spectral broadening, post stenotic turbulence, and diastolic velocity of greater than 100 cm per second, ICA over CCA peak systolic velocity ratio of 4 or greater, high pitch sound are the pulse wave Doppler imaging. You get a very, very high pitch sound due to the jet, increased post stenotic velocity. Okay? For example, you can see here the Peak systolic velocity is, 100, uh, is 366 centimeter per second. 
while the end diastolic velocity is 140 centimeter per second okay you can see the obvious spectral broadening the whole thing is filled with color indicating very severe stenosis and this at a high scale 114 centimeter per second high scale and you still get a liaising artifact this indicating a high grade stenosis okay this plaque here is the plaque here is significant normal flow in the column in the common current artery is usually greater than 45 centimeter per second should be more than 45 less than less than 125 somewhere in between okay high flow in the uh, common current artery bilaterally if it is bilaterally high flow okay can be due to high cardiac output in hypertensive patients in, in young athlete athletics can increase velocity in both common carotid arteries okay you should keep that in mind if it is low flow like less than 40 45 centimeter per second in both common carotid artery can be secondary to poor cardiac output from cardiomyopathy valvular heart disease extensive myocardial infarction yani mama both carot both carotid arteries having severe stenosis can happen but unlikely okay so you should keep in mind that there is uh, some cardiac condition okay ratios are preferred if there are low common current artery velocities with reduced cardiac output or hard common current artery velocities with high output cardiac condition you, you use the uh, ICA over CCA ratio okay better you get better evaluation okay Peak systolic velocity in the ICA may be increased if there is severe contralateral ICA disease. If the right ICA is severely stenosed, you might have increased velocity in left ICA to compensate. If one is stenosed, the other is stenosed. Okay? You should keep that also in mind. Arrhythmia can be a real problem, which part to measure. The peak systolic velocity will be low if measured if after premature ventricular contraction. Can be high after a compensatory pause when you a regular heartbeat in a premature beat to take low peak systolic velocity in a compensatory uh, beat to take high output which one which one should i measure the premature or the late one okay it uh, the velocities after uh, different rhythms can alter the ICA and CCA ratio لا نقدر نقيس peak systolic velocity ولا نقدر نقيس الراتيو you know, have a regular arrhythmia okay so you should wait for a regular beat and then you measure if it is not possible the results will be limited either mark will beat regular beat خلاص limited examination you look for the plaques you measure them and that's it the velocities will be uh, impossible to measure okay now near occlusion versus total ICA occlusion the distinction is very important, we said, because 99% narrowing has a different management from 100% occlusion. Okay? You should be careful to say whether this is complete occlusion or near occlusion. Okay? The hallmark is of a near occlusion is what called string sign or trickle flow. Trickle flow, artery has a very narrow flow. Okay? And you see this with a low scale if you increase the scale you will lose this and you will have a result of a complete occlusion you can use power doppler also or you can use color doppler as you like okay color dopplers will be more sensitive power doppler okay again trickle flow you can see here you see the measurement of the velocity is low velocity it's about five centimeter per second because the stenosis is very severe like 99% maybe okay so total ICA occlusion there is a characteristic to and fro flow pattern at the point of occlusion they call it thud flow at the color doppler and pulse wave doppler imaging uh, you can see the image uh, the thrombus visualization and the absent flow at the color doppler imaging and dampened resistive flow at the CCA and pulse wave doppler there will be something called X Externalization of the CCA. We said the CCA has a combination of flow because ICA, internal and external carotid, are supplied from the common carotid. 
when the internal carotid is occluded, there will be externalization of the common carotid artery. The signal will be high resistance pattern. Get it? Okay. Hey. Sorry. Like this one here? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Ah, this one. You can see the flow, the lumen is markedly narrowed. The gate is only 20, and the flow velocity is something around 5 or 6 centimeters per second, indicating severe, severe, severe stenosis. However, not 100%. It's still patent. Okay? What they do here, they make a catheterization of the ephemeral artery, and they try to place a stent here to dilate the lumen. Okay? Welcome. So, you can see here there is a plaque causing complete occlusion of the ICA. The scale velocity is 19 centimeter per second, low scale, no trickle of flow, no signs of patency, and there is the characteristic to and fro, like something like the yin yang sign, okay? Because the blood tries to go and seclude it, it goes back, okay? If you take measurement, you can see this is a low or high resistance pattern, this one here. This is a high resistance pattern uh, due to externalization of the common carotid artery. Yes. It will, after, after a while, the, the flow will be reversed. We'll talk about it in just a minute, okay? So, near or total occlusion of the common carotid artery, the reversal of a flow direction in the external carotid artery via collateral vessels recruitment to a patent ICA may occur causing internalization of the external carotid artery. Yani, if the common carotid artery on the right side is occluded, common carotid on the right side occluded, okay? What will happen? The external carotid artery has, has many branches. It will start shifting blood from the left side via collaterals to the internal carotid artery. The common masdud, occluded. The external will the blood to the internal. The right side occluded. The right ICA will steal blood from the left side to the left internal carotid artery. From to the right, sorry, internal carotid artery. Yani there will be stealing of blood from the opposite side. The external will be a low resistance pattern. It will be the common carotid that is not Get it or not? When the right common carotid artery occluded, the right external carotid artery will shift the blood to the right internal carotid artery. The left to the right? Yeah, the blood from the left to the right. Until it gives the blood supply to the brain. The brain is the most important organ to be supplied with the blood. Okay? Yani, like this. This is the common carotid artery completely occluded. What will happen? The internal is open, the external is open. How many are occluded? The external will steal blood from the from the its branches and shift them to the external. Uh, to the internal, sorry. Get it? To supply the brain. Where they get blood external? External uh, supplies the face has a significant amount of uh, collaterals with the other side external and in, also intracranial. Uh, يعني, uh, collaterals. كلها تصير recruitment تزيد ال collaterals حتى تزيد ال blood ال external carotid حتى يزيد ال blood ال internal. ال brain أهم شيء. البقية كلها مو مشكلة. مهم ال brain. Okay? If the ICA is completely occluded, one of two things will happen. Either uh, ischemic stroke. Okay. Wait. Either completely occluded because ischemic, uh, ischemic stroke, or if there is competent circle of fullness and enough enough uh, uh, collateral intracranial collateral circulation, the opposite side will start to compensate from the vertebral arteries, from the opposite internal carotid artery. Sometimes even from the external carotid artery will uh, give collateral circulation into the intracranial compartment uh, via ophthalmic artery. Okay, so anastomosis. 
and supplies the brain. If there is enough collateral circulation, sometimes there is not enough collateral, or circular fluid is completely occluded or insufficient, will result in ischemic stroke. Okay? Causes of image Doppler mismatch, including cardiac arrhythmias, valvular heart disease, aort aortic stenosis, hypo or hypertension, tandem lesions, uh, tandem, yani vague, vague lesions. Okay? Non stenotic plaque, long segments, high grade stenosis, carotid dissection, pre occlusive lesion, tortuosity, calcified plaques, all of these will result in image Doppler mismatch. Yani image shikil will Doppler shikil. For example, you can see here. The, uh, this is a aortic valve disease with AF, okay, resulting in irregular rhythm, different kinds of arrhythmias, okay. There is marked abnormal peak stenotic and diastic. Uh, also, uh, the B here there is up to 99% ICA stenosis with aortic stenosis. Tamar, okay. Uh, also at the C image this there is an aortic insufficiency resulting in a diastolic reversed flow so cardiac disease can affect the doppler reading arrhythmias insufficiency and stenosis okay tortuous arteries can result eccentric jets of flow or flows like example here this is a very tortuous artery resulting in multiple different kinds of colors you should be careful with these tortuosities, especially in elderly patients, are more prone to having tortuous arteries than young patients. The elderly could have tortuosity extra. If there is a stenosis, you measure like normal, but you can you be careful with the angle. You should be make sure that the angle is correct because the artery is tortuous and there is stenosis. You should measure the post stenotic velocity very carefully, making sure that the angle direction is parallel to the direction of blood flow, not to the direction of the artery. If you cannot measure the stenosis, for example, calcified plaque, you can estimate it from the jet. If a calcified plaque, patent should say we at a post stenotic velocity. Is it increased or not? If it's increased, this is a significant stenosis. If it's not increased, this is unlikely to be significant stenosis. Okay? Okay, an example. Here, Mahdinil angle parallel to the direction of the artery, not to the direction of the blood flow, resulting in markedly increased velocity. Yeah, it's like it's velocity more than 300 centimeters per second. But the arterial lumen is patent. So this doesn't make sense. You should adjust the angle to make it correct. Okay? If the carotid bulb is capacious, large carotid bulb, there could be a larger plaque that failed to produce velocity increase. Yani you should see a very big plaque, but the velocity is normal. Why? Because the carotid bulb is big. This is called a non-stenotic plaque big plaque at the carotid bulb ca causing no stenosis because the carotid bulb is big. Yeah, for example here, you can see this is the carotid bulb, this is a large plaque here, okay? And you can see there is no aliasing distal to it and when you measure the peak systolic velocity, the, sorry, the peak systolic velocity is normal. Why? Because the carotid bulb is big, capacious, resulting in a non-stenotic plaque. Tama? Obstructive lesions in one carotid can affect the velocity in the contralateral vessel, like we said that. Okay? <laughs> Proximal common carotid artery stenosis may reduce the flow, like tandem lesions, vague lesions, ill defined lesions. Okay? Yani, the plaque is the original common carotid, proximal common carotid artery. There will reduce the flow in the common carotid and in the external and internal. The whole thing will reduce the flow. Okay? Like for example here, incre increased left ICA velocity less than 50%, visible stenosis and right ICA occlusion. Like here. In ICA velocity, the occlusion is less than 50%. Okay? But the right ICA who will occluded, 
resulting in increased velocity in the left ICA. So the velocity 378 centimeter per second. Why is that? Because the other one is occluded. The flow increases in the competent one. إذا واحد مزود ثاني عوض يشيل حمل اثنين مثل إذا كدني أتروفايد the other kidney will hypertrophy the same thing if one artery occluded the other one will supply blood twice okay gray scale for what you measure it at the gray scale if you can better you have you can measure the area stenosis or diameter stenosis as you like You, when you image both, you clarify it exactly. Okay? Yani, you might, when you measure, if you start with this side, okay, you'll have something confusing. This plague is less than 50%. Why the flow is markedly elevated? You finish your exam on the right side, you go to the left side, and you see there's an occluded ICA. Uh, that's why, because this side is compensating. Okay? High-grade stenosis produces increased velocity in the region of plaque or distal to it. High-grade intra- or extracranial occlusive disease in tandem may reduce anticipated velocity shifts and produce a typical high-resistance ICA waveform. يعني إذا occlusion causing occlusion بال ICA or high-grade stenosis, this lesion is intracranial. يعني تخيل intracranially there is a plaque causing severe narrowing. Okay, احنا ما نشوف الانتراكرينيال نشوف الاكستراكرينيال تمام؟ What will we will we see? We will see high resistance pattern بال ICA. قيس ال ICA يطلع high resistance flow. شوف ماكو ماكو ما عنده بليك or not severe بليك. Why there is a high resistance pattern? The only explanation is that there is an intracranial بليك. Get it? إذا high resistance pattern بال ICA. ICA be high resistance. Umadi plaque. There's no plaque. Why? Because there is an intracranial plaque causing high increased resistance by ICA. Okay? That's why you get high resistance pattern by ICA. Tamam? Peak systolic velocity normal. Peak systolic velocity normal. But the end diastolic gets very low. Mithil external carotid artery. Okay? Huh? Externalization, you see, uh, you, you should see an occluded artery, occluded lumen. Here, the lumen is patent, everything is patent. No, so we have resistance flow pattern one ICA, best. Okay? That's what we call tandem lesions, vague lesions, ill defined lesions. Okay? Like example here, you can see the right CCA causing high resistance flow pattern. Also here, you can see high resistance flow pattern. Why is that? Because hatta reverse the flow because there is intracranial narrowing. That's what we call tandem lesions. Ahna madan shufa, but we expect it. Okay? Regarding the vertebral artery in the subclavian steel, it's very easy. The subclavian arise here. The subclavian artery, if there is a stenosis proximal to the origin of the vertebral artery, what will happen? The blood will go from the right side through the basilar artery and then reversely flow into the left subclavian artery. Steel syndrome. Okay? The left steals the blood from the right. Okay? Al short the whole plaque is in the pre-vertebral pre segment of the subclavian artery. Okay? Qabl al-vertebral. يعني إذا البليك هنا صايرة بوست فيرتيبرال ما يساعدنا سبكليفين ستيل منين ياخذ ستيل؟ اوكي؟ لازم بالبري فيرتيبرال هو الكومونست طبعا. There are three types there is occult steel اللي هو minimal hemodynamic change integrated flow with mid systolic deceleration might be tem might temporarily be converted to a more abnormal waveform in response to reactive hyperemia in the epsilateral arm after arm exercise. يعني, you make the patient exercise his arm, you'll see some reversal of a flow in the vertebral artery. Okay? Partial subclavian steel corresponds to moderate hemodynamic change. The pulse wave Doppler spectral show partially reversed flow 
there will be what's called bunny rabbit sign what's bunny rabbit sign this sign here you can see this shape is looked like a, a rabbit face this is bunny rabbit sign indicating partial steel okay you can see here there's it looks like a rabbit with a very long ear تمام هاي بالفيرتيبرال ارتري ستيل كومبليت سبكليفيان ستيل there will be floor reverse in the vertebral artery well, it may be associated with ischemic symptoms in the ipsilateral arm how you know that flow is reversed you compare the vertebral artery with the common current artery normally they should be the same color يا اما اثنينهم بلو او اثنينهم ريد حسب السيتنج مال المشين حسب الانجل اوف يور بروب If some one of them is red, the other is blue. There is a steel. There is a reversed flow. Okay. You can see here there is downward flow. It's blue. The common carotid artery, the uh, adjacent, is red, indicating subclavian steel syndrome. Okay. Reversed flow. So, in conclusion, the carotid art ultrasound offers a non-invasive evaluation of the extracranial neck portion of the carotid and vertebral arteries for atherosclerotic disease. There should be standardized technical parameters, scaling methods, Doppler analysis, and interpretation to, to enhance the accuracy and reproducibility of the results. All of us should do it the same way. Had the nafsil result tatlah, or at least very close results between all of us. مو المريض يروح على واحد يقول له complete occlusion الثاني يقول incomplete occlusion we should all make the same measurement the same way to make reproducible results okay thank you very